Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Since we're in the month of October, Halloween season, I'm about to review a horror fantasy that came out on November 17, 1999. It was uh, near Thanksgiving at this point. Uh, came out before Toy Story 2 and The World Is Not Enough. Yeah, the James Bond film with Pierce Brosnan. And it's the movie called Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, which is based on the book by Washington Irving, yeah, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. It's a Tim Burton film with Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci, and Christopher Walken. Yeah. And surprisingly, this was a big hit um, at the box office. Um, its budget was around 70 to 100 million dollars, um, but worldwide it made over 207 million. So it did very well. And this was a big surprise for me too because um, yeah, coming from all the Tim Burton films I've watched and I love Tim Burton of course. I mean he, no matter what he does he always uh, makes these films uh, very special. But sometimes you know he does kind of go ahead of himself. <laughs> But he's always casting, you know, Johnny Depp's, but he does also cast other actors, you know, like Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, um, among others, even Catherine O'Hara for that matter, and Jeffrey Jones. He's also in this movie, by the way. Um, it, it also features an all-star cast, too. Uh, you also got Miranda Richardson, uh, Casper Van Dien from Starship Troopers. Uh, Michael Gammon, who later went on to play uh, Dumbledore in all the later Harry Potter films. Uh, had, once again, Jeffrey Jones from Fairless Bueller's Day Off and Beetlejuice. And even uh, Mom and Dad Save the World, among others. And they also had the score by Danny Elfman, too, to do this. Um, it's really amazing, and this is actually one of the uh, earlier Blu-ray releases from Paramount. Yeah, this is at the time when Blu-rays were brand new, but they were actually in the format wars uh, between Blu-rays and HD DVDs. And apparently, Paramount was actually releasing both HD DVDs and Blu-rays, as well as DVDs, of course. So that was the case, and they ported all the features. Uh, yeah, they had um, all the features from the DVD, plus the two trailers are in HD, so it looks even better. And, and of course, you can see the cast right there. <laughs> yeah, even Crystal Walken. Uh, so, yeah. Um, as you could tell, this is what it looked like, and it came in a clear Blu ray disc. Yeah, this is what it really looked like uh, back in the day before they started to use artwork on them. And they later uh, used the, the light blue coloring for all their discs. So that's what you got. So you can tell how early it is. Um, even though it's an Eagle Box case. Go figure. Um, they used to have it in regular Blu-ray cases. A very wonderful adaptation that Tim Burton had to offer because he was a big fan of the book too and this was a, a good idea to do so on top of that he also saw the Disney cartoon <laughs> that's based on it and I know I have seen the cartoon as well because I, I remember loving that and, um, so it's really interesting um, to see that I mean anyway it's, it's a story about uh, Ichabod Crane who's uh, an investigator from New York yeah, in 1799, uh, he came to Sleepy Hollow just to investigate uh, the mystery of the Headless Horseman. He was a mercenary. So he, he goes around decapitating the, the heads of all the townspeople. And he also f has a love interest to um, uh, Kat Katrina Van Tazel. He teams up with his partner who's a, a kid who happens to be uh, part of the family members. Uh, he doesn't have a mom or dad anymore because they're all decapitated. So 
this is what the film was was achieving. And Christopher Walken plays the headless horseman, who was very creepy in this movie. He really was, and he doesn't speak in the role either. So that's very interesting. Okay. So let's get to the review. It stars once again Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci, Christopher Walken, uh, Casper Ben Dean, yeah, from Starship Troopers, Michael Gammon, uh, Miranda Richardson. Jeffrey Jones, uh, Richard Griffin, Ian McDiarmid, Michael Goff uh, from uh, Batman, all the Batman movies, uh, Christopher Lee, yes, has been in several movies, mostly the Hammer films and many others, uh, Claire Skinner, uh, Peter Guinness, and um, Stephen uh, Waddington. Also a cameo appearance by Martin Landau who just won an Oscar for the movie uh, Ed Wood which Tim Burton directed. Uh, it's written by Andrew Kevin Walker. Yes, the same writer who did Seven. Uh, he joins in with Kevin Yeager so he wrote the story. He also worked on the human and creature effects in the movie. In fact, he originally was going to direct the film too before they gave it to, to Burton. And it's directed by Tim Burton. The movie began set in New York City in 1799 and getting ready for the new millennium, um, for the new century. Um, Ichabod Crane, who's played by Johnny Depp, is being sent to Westchester County, known as where the city called Sleepy Hollow is located in New York, which is being plagued by a series of brutal slains who have found all their victims decapitated. So they have no heads, so all their bodies are being buried, but all their heads are being missing completely. So Peter Ben Garrett, who's a wealthy farmer, along with his son Dirk and the widower Emily Winship. Um, Crane had actually learned that the locals believe that there's a killer on the loose. But apparently it turned out to be, as we all know, a, a Hessian mercenary of, from the American Revolutionary War. And he would later become, as we know, the Headless Horseman, who was played by Christopher Walken. So Crane suddenly investigates, being very skeptical about the whole thing, about all the paranormal elements that's going around, until he suddenly encounters the Headless Horseman. I mean, at first it was sort of a prank that was being played by, by Braun Van Vaunt, who was played by Casper Van Dien. Yeah, this is where he dresses up as the Headless Horseman and just threw a pumpkin head all the way straight to his face. It was on fire. So he, he was knocked out and then winds up being taken straight to the house and you know he's been having all these dreams yeah so on and so forth and so he tries to figure it out all the clues the mysteries the evidence yeah he also worked together for a while um, to go after him the horseman <laughs> but anyway, um, he's had to stay over and suddenly uh, meets um, one of the, uh, the Bantezo family, Katrina, who's played by Christina Ricci, yeah. the daughter of the richest family. Apparently the Bantezos were responsible for the, uh, the witchcraft that's going on. It really leads to all of that and it also leads to all the secrets behind what's going on. Uh, between that and, and the Headless Horseman and how this whole all began here. So. But it really links to all the deaths here. Um, after they slayed uh, one of the free victims that they got, they also found the fourth one and also the fifth one as well and then until more until a lot of until more uh, victims started to appear. Uh, 
Igabog actually came and and actually investigates um, one of, one victim that had his head removed, all decapitated. But he then he gets a he takes his um, his kit where he takes out uh, one of those you know, just doing an autopsy where he takes out uh, one of those um, those chemicals and he pours it onto the the ground. You know, he, he begins to try to visualize how the headless horseman came. You know, he was on the black steed that he has, you know, the black horse. Goes around, you know, grabs the, the sword and and just slashes um, the guy's head off. He begins to check a close-up by taking those uh, magnifying glass gargoyles. You know, he looks very closely inside the, the body. Um, between the neck and that's where you see like a beetle showing up and you begin to see like you know there's flesh and, and bones in there very messed up <laughs> and at first he thought maybe there might be just a murderer with flesh and blood and he, he begins that this whole thing was a joke like there never was a headless horseman but apparently he saw it and actually slay um, Samuel uh, Fiss, who's played by Richard Griffins, and he was holding the cross, you know, for protection, but that didn't work around. So, so it, it continues to go on. You know, they actually had a console uh, that's being held at church. You know, just before the horseman comes around and continues to slay more victims, but then we begin to learn. The twist about what happens and who's actually controlling it that's going on. How they're going to try to find a way to stop it. Uh, also, uh, and before we get to that, uh, uh, Igabog actually went um, along with uh, Katrina and, um, and Dirk to investigate the Tree of the Dead. Yes, because that's where all the uh, decapitated heads were being buried. So he takes out an axe, you know, he cuts out, he chops the, the oak, you know, just so he can open it, and all these blood started to splatter on him. Yeah. <laughs> so he got a lot of blood on, on all the way, to, he got a lot of blood on his face. And then suddenly this is where he gets to see all these decapitated heads. And they started to move, and that's when the Headless Horseman appears. <laughs> Getting ready for his next victim. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, but it's a very wonderful adaptation of the movie. Uh, very well done, well made. Um, great cast, too. I mean... You wouldn't believe that Tim Burton had to take the guts to cast all of your familiar faces to join in in one story, which is really good. Because um, they're all very good, too, especially Johnny Depp in his uh, best performance in a long time. I think this is right up there with his performance uh, in uh, Edward Scissorhands and, and even Ed Wood, for that matter. Yeah. And. He really took it well, too. I mean, even though his character is supposed to look very ugly, I, I think originally they were going to use prosthetics for him, like they were going to add a, a nose and, and ears. So that was always the case. Um, uh, also, I forgot to mention, uh, there were scenes in the movie where he started having dreams uh, when he was a kid. Yeah, he was ugly looking as a kid than he was as an adult, so that's really interesting. Yeah, he dreams about his mother. Yeah, you know, he's ex she's actually a witch, but she's being abused by her husband, who's a war veteran. Yeah, in fact, he was also responsible for killing her. Because this is where um, he started getting all these markings uh, on his hands. Because from touching the all these uh, spikes. Yeah, there, there was a bunch of that, the, a lot of those spikes and all these other uh, steel and metal um, things that are inside 
the, the room. And this is where we found out that she was killed. Um, a lot of blood started to splatter. You know, very messed up. Um, also the fact that she was uh, the one that gave them a gift, which actually was a spinner. Yeah, it's a spinner where it has the cardinal and the cage. So when you spin it around, uh, you could, it actually looks like the cardinal actually came from the cage. So it looked like he was in the cage the whole time and then trying to get out. So if you spin it onto it, yeah, that was cool. I, I love the scene um, in the movie where where there was a chase scene uh, between um, Igabod, Katrina, and Dirk. You know, they were on the, the coach. Um, just after they they went on top of the uh, the windmill where it has all these uh, uh, sleighs that moves around. They, they had to go on top of it because both the, the horsemen was about to go after them. Uh, and then we learned the secret behind this that yes, uh, that uh, she was responsible. So, so both, um, so both Mary and and uh, the horseman was about to chase them around. But then they later went on the coach. So they're being chased around. Uh, the horseman was ready to go after Ichabod, as well as the, as well as uh, Katrina and Dirk. So he was ready to cut off his head, their heads, but leads to that and they cut off the the, the coach and the trashes and everything <laughs> so, yeah. that is until he finally found uh, his head and also has the kiss of death on Mary <laughs> yeah it's a little spoiler but I'm gonna mention it anyway there's also sword fight scenes such as the one with uh, Ichabod and Brom Van Font, yeah, Casper Van Dien, of course. And yeah, they, he takes out the, the hedge clippers, and tries to, um, tries to cut uh, the headless horseman. So it was like a sword battle between them, and Ichabod joins in. He you know, has a sword. And, until, um, until the cutters had fell, and um, the horseman takes it, and then just. Just slices uh, Ben Vront, and his body is just all cut to pieces. Very messed up. Um, apparently, um, Ichabod got stabbed um, in the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, he got stabbed before, but it happened again. <laughs> but I guess he was lucky. Again, wonderful cast. Um, including uh, Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci. Yeah. yeah, Christopher Walken was very creepy as the Hellless Horseman. I mean, with the head on, he has those large, bulgy blue eyes, and he actually has jaws for teeth. Yes, so he's starting to look almost like Jaws from from the James Bond movies. <laughs> that was played by Richard Kiev. So. That was even more scarier. They actually shot this somewhere in Terrytown, I believe. Even though they had to scout other locations, uh, somewhere in upstate New York, at the Hudson Valley, as well as Stu Bridges, Massachusetts. But apparently, they had to do whatever they can to set the film in that century. They, they even started to build all their houses to make it look exactly alike. So, I think it's like the exteriors and the interiors and all that just to make the film just right. Um, but they also did all the the studio work at Shepperton Studios as well, so they so that's where they started to build those uh, sets. And and as well as the Tree of the Dead too. At Leverston. So it, it was amazing. It really was. I love the cinematography they use. They use a lot of uh, it's like dark black and grays, which at this rate it's it's called uh, monochromatic. They actually use the color temperature to to make the film look as dark as ever. Tim Burton is known for his uh, gothic uh, 
exteriors, so he does a lot of films that way by using German expressionism. It makes the movie look even better. The cinematography was done by Emmanuel Lebesky. So this was the right choice because um, he was known for doing the, the cinematography for the movie The Great Expectations from 1998. Yeah, the one with Ethan Hawke as well as uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Robert De Niro yeah, that film and well directed too and they, they took a lot of time to um, create all the effects that they used, they actually used CGI for some of the effects that they created yeah they used industrial light and magic to um, to show all the scenes of of the fire that's that has all these faces on there um, the movements of the Hellas Horsemen, you know, moving around, you know, ex even jumping out of the, the Tree of Death, all of that. The, the, the look of the blood that's actually done by, um, by paint. They use a lot of red paint so it looks so very rich and colorful. <laughs> I love that. Um, but they also use CGI blood as well in the mix. There's also one where Ichabod did went to, to the witch's lair. Yeah, this is where we get to see the witch and it does do that uh, the head mark. You know, cutting out the heads. and So we don't even see the witch until the last uh, moment where, he, where the witch was just working on a new potion. You know, he took out the, the cardinal, you know, the red bird. and also takes out a bat, you know, try to mix it all together and this is where we begin to reveal her face and all these uh, goofy eyes and tongues start to come right out that was like whoa and they use CGI for that scene too to create that but that was very creepy and of course the human and creature effects by Kevin Yeager I mean he did a very good job actually uh, creating all the all the face mask of all the actors and then they actually use all these machineries of of uh, all these um, animatronics on the uh, the black steed you know, the horse as well as the tronics on the the human the humanoid tronics um, I think that's such a word that they put into the the townspeople all the characters, you know, where they had to cut off their heads, uh, decapitation right there, and how they did it, you know, how, like for example, there was a scene, as I mentioned before, where they decapitated uh, Samuel Phillips, and suddenly his head starts to roll around after Horseman cuts it off. It moves around, and his body fell all the way down, uh, and just before the. <laughs> Where Ichabod suddenly faints and and the head started to appear on uh, all the way straight to his crouch yeah, before the horseman takes the sword and and <laughs> just took it. <laughs> uh, that was really something. Um, a lot of blood and gore all the way. Uh, very well done. I really, I highly recommend this movie. It's it's very, uh, it, it has a lot of co there, there were comedy elements in the movie. I mean, such as the uh, the scene where he, where Ichabod just wears the the magnifying glass uh, gargoyles, and suddenly when he took uh, one of the the, the bodies, uh, it was a female body where they they actually had the stomach cut open and. And he tries to operate, and that's when the blood starts to shoot on his his face, or just raid his gargles. <laughs> so, interesting. Uh, I love the score by Danny Elfman. Again, you know, he always comes up with a creepy score for the movie. It really fits so well. Uh, and yes, there's a lot of romance in the film, but it's a lot of fantasy going on, you know, like something involved for witchcraft and everything that's happening. Um, you know, the eyes of the deaf that's been drawn by chalk and 
all the investigations, the evidence, and everything that's going on, yeah, that sort of way. So yeah, um, again, highly recommend this movie. It's 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 fun. It's entertaining. It's scary at times, but it's well done. I love it. I love the cast and love everything that went into it. So. Anyway, that's Sleepy Hollow, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.